Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episodes 6 and 7 of season 3 of Dragon Prince. So, yeah, we're doing two episodes today, and we're going to do two episodes next week to finish off the season. The reason for this is simply not because I want to just get this over or anything, but with only these four episodes left, you know these final four episodes are going to be big. They're going to have a lot to cover. They're going to really close out this season. And I, I kind of want to do the final two episodes together because I feel like they would kind of tell a full story. You know what I mean? It, it, that happens in a lot of shows where like the, not only the final episode, but the one preceding it is also technically part of the finale, you could say. Um, and so instead of doing six and seven separately, I'm just deciding to do them together as well. Um, this way it just makes it feel a little, I guess, a little more natural than just randomly having two episodes in the final week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this week and then next week and, the, and that will finish off season three. And it sucks that these seasons are so short. I, I wish these seasons were longer because they definitely could be. And, and it's not a knock on the series or the creators or anything. I'm just saying that they, they could easily put more into this series to be able to make it longer. To be able to give like 12 or 13 episode seasons. But I know that doesn't really fit with Netflix's binge model as well. It's better if the seasons are shorter like this. <laughs> um, are like eight, nine episodes long. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that's just how it's going to have to go. Um, Blood of Zeus is also only uh, eight episodes long. So, it's just how it is. Um, we are eventually getting season four, though. So... I think they actually did release a release date for that, or at least announce a like time frame. I don't remember when it was, if they did say it, and I'm not just crazy. <laughs> but I, I obviously won't be getting to it right away either way. Um, we have other stuff to check out in the meantime for the donation rewards, and we would get back to that whenever we could. Um. That being said, uh, yeah, things with this season are starting to turn in a couple directions. Uh, with Ezra and the kingdom and everything, things have gone kind of bad. Viren has taken over. Ezra has basically had to escape with help from Soren. And war is definitely on the horizon. And not even... Um, Antamaya is there to lend any assistance or to try and keep things in check because she's being held captive by the Sunfire Elves. And meanwhile, Callum and Rayla, they, on the other hand, are having good luck. They had a little bit of a bump when the um, one girl tried to steal their uh, stuff, most notably Zim. <laughs> And it looked like she was going to legitimately deliver Zim to the queen, to the dragon queen, but more for her own selfish purposes. She she wanted the glory and whatnot. <laughs> she was still trying to accomplish the mission, though. You have to give her that. And she ended up getting, they ended up catching her and ended up saving her uh, life from the snakes. And now they're just kind of traveling together, more in earnest this time, I feel. And we finally had the long-awaited kiss from Callum and Rayla. We knew it was coming. It was obvious, pretty much since the beginning of the series, that these two were going to end up together. And part of that is the entire, you know, main male character, main female character kind of thing that a lot of shows do. 
Like, even Avatar, as good as Avatar is, you cannot deny it fell into that trap as well. Like, right from the first episode, you knew Aang and Katara were going to get together. It was obvious. And granted, uh, they learned and did something different with Legend of Korra. But then with this series, they just go right back into that. And it's not necessarily a terrible trope or anything. It's not necessarily bad or harmful. It's just so generic. And it's just so generic to have the main male and main female characters end up together. Because it's what everybody expects. It's the, it's the base. It's the norm. It's the just boring option. It's like we have a main male character and a main female character. Of course they have to get together. That's just how it works, right? We can't have a main female character unless she gets together with the main male character. We can't have a main male character unless he gets together with the main female character. So many shows do this, and some people are admittedly a lot more against it than I am, uh, just because of the idea of it kind of like feeling like the characters are only exist really to get together. I feel like it just depends on how it's handled. And for most of these shows, Avatar, for example, it's actually handled very well. Like, Aang and Katara have great chemistry together. And that builds throughout the series. And here, Callum and Rayla have great chemistry together. But I'm just saying that it's, it's a very generic option. And mind you, they could end up pulling a fast one on us and having this relationship not end up working out and something else coming of it in the future. They could. I feel it's very unlikely. I feel like this is pretty much guaranteed to be endgame, but they could switch it up and surprise us. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Either way, I am actually genuinely happy about their relationship. Because, again, they have great chemistry. They work well together. I I'm good with it. I, I do like it and support it, so, yeah. We'll just have to see how it goes and if they continue to write it out as well as they have. <sighs> so, yeah, it's just a question of what's going to happen next. What is Viren going to do to kick off this war against uh, Zadia? What is our Cal Calum, Rayla, and... Their friend and their new friend are gonna do next in their journey. They've got to be getting close. Like I can't see them stretching this out too much further. So they've got to be getting close to the Dragon Queen, right? I don't know what's gonna happen after that, though. I don't know. We'll just we'll have to see because I'm just I'm just curious as to where this is going to head. I'm curious where it's gonna head with Viren as well, especially with the one dude speaking his ear, and now he can see him using the magic silkworm shit. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, and just as a note, um, as of recording this, I am still on the back end, hopefully on the back end, of a very minor cold due to the changing weather and shit. Um, the weather's been all kinds of wacky lately, so it's been messing with me a bit. Um, and don't you don't have to worry about anything. Luckily, thankfully, it's very minor. It, it's basically amounted to just a headache, a very light tickle in my throat that's caused a tiny bit of coughing and a little bit of mucus buildup. That's it. It's been, it's been honestly one of the easiest colds to get through for me. Um, but it's, it's not been, like, perfectly, like, okay. Like, it's still been annoying. It's just, it's been super easy to get through comparative to other colds I've had in the past. Um, also, did my camera die? What the hell? That hasn't happened in a while. Um... Hold on a second here.
I'm sorry about that. I have no idea when, when or how that happened. Like, I, I'm looking at the camera, which is, I, I've shown you guys this when I started doing this. I have it on the tripod now, so it's above the screen and everything. I didn't know, it has a green light on it. I just didn't notice it go out. So it must have just hap had happened. But I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope it wasn't frozen on my ugly mug for too long. Um, it's better when it's in motion, you know? <laughs> but yeah, um, I've just been kind of recovering from this and everything. I took yesterday off from recording anything. Um, yesterday as in Monday, um, cause I'm recording this on Tuesday. <laughs> um, I took yesterday off from recording every, anything, which is unusual for me. Um, well, except for the boys review. I did record that, but it was after that that I decided to stop and not record anything more. Just because my voice was starting to go during that, and I noticed it very heavily. Uh, so I, I, I decided I, I was going to just take the rest of the day, rest, have some soup and whatnot, and just hope it's better by the next day. And I woke up today and it's better. It's definitely better. It's not completely gone. I still have that little bit of a tickle in my throat. Um, the headache is almost non-existent at the moment, but that comes and goes. And the mucus is still a little bit there, honestly, but that usually stays longer. <laughs> um, but hopefully I should be able to get through a couple recordings today, um, for sure. And we'll just go from there, obviously. Um, but yeah, I am excited to get into these episodes to see what we have in store for, well, leading into the finale of this season. And I have a feeling that things are going to get worse before they get better. So, yeah. And I just wanted to let you know about how I was feeling and everything, because just in case my voice starts to crack or go or whatnot during the reaction, that's why. Um, or you might have been able to hear it during this redirect. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully everything is good. But we're just going to get this started. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episodes. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Yeah. Definitely the thing you could take from this episode, well, these episodes, is fuck Veer. Like, they tried to even make him a little more sympathetic here, or at least to show that he has what he thinks are good intentions. His idea is that he wants to see humanity flourish, right? But in order to do so, he racistly looks down on magical kind and wants to annihilate and eliminate them. He wants to control them. He wants to dominate over them. Like the little worm friend whose name I will never probably remember, by the way. I, I don't remember his actual name. Um, but he even like had to coerce Veer to be truthful about it and, and like admit that it's like he's doing this to take over Zadia. That he wants to rule. And that his goal of seeing humanity flourish requires him to take over. It's undeniable the stuff he's doing is evil. Whether he thinks he has good intention or not. Racism is always evil. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
racism by just nature is an evil action. The desire to hold dominance over entire races of people to completely dominate their entire cultures, an entire group of multiple cultures and peoples. There, there is no positive reason for that. It is evil. And the actions he and the little worm friend took in these episodes, especially episode seven, killing the Sunfire Elf Queen, stealing the power of the Sunfire Elves, and forcefully turning the soldiers into the Sunfire monsters, practically against their will. I mean, they didn't fight against it really, but they didn't agree to it either. The only one who actually agreed to it was uh, Caselus. Um, all of this is just evil. It, it is a bid for power, nothing more. No matter what he thinks he's doing it for, this is purely a bid for control and power, a bid for dominance over others. And so, <coughs> excuse me. Soren was right in 100% to leave. And, and like I had said in the, in the reaction, when Claudia is like saying like, don't make me choose, it's like by the fact that you're saying this and the fact you're, you're refusing to see what's right in front of your face, you've already chosen. Like I understand he's your father. I, I understand that you want to believe in him, that you want to trust in him. But there's a certain point where you have to realize that he's betrayed that trust. That he does not deserve that trust. And Soren realizes it. Like, you don't think Soren loved his father? No, he very much did. But he realized what his father had become. He realized what Viren had become and what he has done, and he understands that this is not right. He's not going to let his personal feelings get in the way of doing what is right here. He's not going to make excuses. And I know that the writers probably have to do this because apparently Claudia is important to Viren's plan because of her magical ability and all. Like, they, they kind of said that when Viren and the Worm Friend were still in the cell. Like, they needed her. Like, he, the Worm Friend was telling him to make sure that he didn't tell her the truth and everything because uh, they needed her and everything. And it's like, uh. and, and I know Viren did sta stand up to her and say she's not, like, a tool. She's my daughter and everything. And again, as I said last time, it's like, I will give him that. He does seem to care for his children. Especially Claudia, honestly. Um, but that doesn't negate his evil. Even the most evil people in history have had people they cared about. That doesn't stop them from being evil. That, that, that's not how it works. So it's like he cares about Claudia and most likely Soren too. That that doesn't stop him from being evil and needing to die. But things are definitely looking back on the downward path here because not only has Catalus now invaded uh, Zadia, not only have they just basically destroyed the Sunfire Elf Society, stolen their magic, and turned all of the soldiers into these Sunfire monsters. 
not only is Viren just becoming more and more irredeemable as time goes on, but apparently Callum and Rayla and them were too late. It seems that the Dragon Queen is gone. And I'm not surprised by that. I'm disappointed, sure, but I'm not surprised. I'm just wondering what's going to happen in that situation now. I don't know where this is going to go, honestly. But there's only two more episodes left in this season. I'm hoping to God that Viren is defeated here. That he is defeated, stripped of his title as king, and hopefully killed. And as I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I've said in the past, like normally I would not root for that kind of thing, but it's like there's a certain point where it's like you have to acknowledge that villains need to die. Certain villains just cannot be left to survive, even in prison stuff. Because, I mean, hell, we've seen it in this in these past episodes. He wormed his way out of prison. That didn't hold. It didn't work. He is too dangerous to the Zadians, to the humans, to everyone. He needs to be taken down. He needs to die. It's practically required. Like, honestly, there's only two ways to stop him at this point. Either he does need to die, or somehow he needs to be stripped of all his ability to use magic. Forever. Pretty much think back to Avatar. Think back to how Aang stole Ozai's ability to bend with his energy bending. Kind of like that, except Viren would have to be stripped of all his ability to use magic. He would have to be completely, completely abandoned by anyone who would be loyal to him, especially Claudia. And he would need to be imprisoned to such a degree that he could not escape and that nothing could allow him to. Like not even the king's order, basically, would allow him to get out. The only thing is, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that it's going to get to the point where that's going to be possible. I think it's going to get to the point where he needs to be killed or he wins. I don't think there's another option there. I, I think that, th that he's too far gone. He has too much help. And it's just, there's not another option. Now, as to what, what that means for stopping the little bug friend, I don't know, because that's an entirely different situation, especially since he's apparently imprisoned somewhere and he doesn't even know where. But he's been imprisoned there for centuries, and presumably unless Viren somehow gets him out, if Viren is stopped, then I presume he'll still be trapped there. So, I mean, as long as Viren is killed, things can be fixed. The only thing is, I think that he is going to be released. I don't know if it's going to be by the end of this season, or if it's going to be sometime in, like, next season or something. I'm definitely getting that vibe, though. We're going to have to see where this goes. Because I, I just, I don't know at this point. Um, but like I said, we only have two episodes to go, and we will be finishing this season off next week. I'm both excited and sad to get to the end of this season, but I, I think it's the right way to do it. 
as I explained in the pre-thoughts, I think that it's the right way to handle it by doing the final two episodes together. And again, I just felt like it worked better by having done these two episodes together as well. Plus, honestly, with the first of these two episodes being a lot of recap on how the King of the Dragons, uh, Thunder, I, I don't remember his actual name, but being a recap of how he was defeated, how the humans took him down, and how Viren manipulated the late king into doing so. It's like, that was all very interesting and whatnot, and there was some other good stuff that happened in the episode, but it was mostly that. So, so it was definitely good that I reacted to two episodes here anyways, just to be able to get to see more, you know, main content. <laughs> Not, again, not that the flashback was bad. It was definitely a good amount of world building and whatnot. But yeah. Um, either way, tell me in the comments below what you thought of these two episodes. And where you think it's going next. If, if you have seen the rest of the season and all, no spoilers, please. Um, I assume that Amaya and the Sunfire princess who i guess would now technically be the queen i i assume she'd be next in line um or was she a general technically well she i, I guess she'd be a princess either way considering considering she was the queen's sister but i assume that they're gonna maybe help in the final battle at the end of this season hopefully like i, I would love to see that but we'll have to see um, but yeah, tell me your thoughts either way. Tell me what you think is going to happen. Again, though, no actual spoilers. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.